Shalom, my name is Randy Weiss. I'm a Jewish believer in a Jewish Messiah. His name is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Messiah. I didn't always know him, but I do know him. And there's a lot of people who do know him, but there's an awful lot of people who don't know him. And in some countries, it's harder to know him because there's not as many people walking around talking about him and telling people about this Jesus. There's some countries where it's actually not legal to have church. It's not legal to uh, declare the gospel publicly and to help people who have needs in their life to find hope in Christ. Some countries, they hate our God. I mean, it's hard to understand, but there are places where Jesus is not loved. And if you think about it, what's not to love about Jesus? He's altogether wonderful, altogether winsome, lovely. Everything about Jesus is just so exceptional. And yet there are nations where Jesus is not beloved. In fact, uh, God is hated in some places. Some of you may be old enough to remember when there was an event in China in Tiananmen Square, where there were students who were taking a stand, um, a peaceful protest, and the government came to silence them. And I've always sort of felt that had it not been for some people with cameras, had it not been for some people who were there to memorialize what was taking place that we might never have known. In fact, as the Chinese tanks rolled up to some of these students, I think the tanks would have just kept on going and rolled right over them and killed them and nobody would have known or cared because they wouldn't have known. I thank God that there are people who take notes who recognize and acknowledge that there are things going on and they want others to know. And in some ways, that's one of the greatest protections that people who have a different point of view, their security in a sense is that somebody else knows. Deep down inside, I think that's news. There's news that Something's happening somewhere at some time, and in a shrinking world, to have access to that news is important so we know what's going on in the world around us, but so the things that are happening to others in this world that we would not otherwise know about, we can know about because of news. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, and I want to introduce you to a precious friend, Stan Jeter. Thank you, Randy. I, I am honored to have you here with us, and I want people to know about what you do and why you do it, because it's about news and it's important news. Absolutely. Um, really appreciate being with you, and I love the introduction. Um, it's true, you know, if without the witnesses, and news is basically a witness to what is, what, what is happening. Without the witnesses, things, um, bad things happen, good things happen that we never know about. Both, good and bad. Yeah. You're right. And um, in our connected world, and especially those of us who are Christians, have a, we have a, a special connection with other Christians. We're like members of the same tribe we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're the, you know the Bible talks about the body of Christ being the, the church, the believers. So when our fellow um, believers are uh, having um, issues, 
in places where persecution is taking place or where they're having successes in many ways that they serve people and they bring them to know God and to love him. Um, so with news, we can capture those things. I mean, we, we want to hear about those things because we are connected, we need to know, and we can support them in, at least in our prayers. And uh, so that's the purpose that drives me and has for years, actually. Um, I grew up as a missionary kid. I traveled, I mean, my parents took me to different parts of the world. So we here at Crosstalk, we love Cuba. We have a very deep connection to Cuba. It, it means a lot to us and the, the people of Cuba are, are very important to us. I know you've got a Cuba connection. Absolutely, I was born there. My parents were missionaries there um, and um, spent the first 10 years of my life there which uh, gave me the language and love for the culture. And then many, many years later, I got to go back and connect with believers and get involved in some of the work of the church too. And, you know, it's great to have this, this connection uh, relating to Cuba. Yeah. But I was saying that uh, as a kid, I was exposed to international. Okay, I was born in another country. Uh, my, we went to Spain, we went to Morocco, we lived in those places. And uh, uh, I, I, I think in growing up with that kind of exposure, we developed an interest in the rest of the world and an understanding that we're not, in our country, in our culture, we're not alone on the planet. So um, um, I, I love the food of other countries. I love the languages and experiences and so forth. But uh, taking it a little bit beyond that, you know, we need, all of us need to have a certain amount of understanding of the bigger world. We're, we're, we're so self-centered. Yes. And we're trained to be so selfish. And I mean, just, I think some nations would look at us and think, boy, these are a narcissistic people. <laughs> I, I'm particularly interested in, you know, you and I go back a long time. We're both long-term members of the National Religious Broadcasters. Right. We both served on the board of directors. We both served on the TV committee. And we initially met through the TV committee. That's right. And I, I remember our our dear friend who's gone on to his reward, uh, Sam Wagner, you and Sam and Lee Miller and I, we were very involved in wanting NRB to have a focus on news and a need to be able to help the believers in other countries get their stories out here and a need for us as believers in this country to connect and be able to help these believers in these other nations. And through the TV committee, there was a a launching pad and yes. you were like a dog with a bone. I mean, you have never let loose of this. You had that passion as did Sam before you got to the committee right. and it just never went away. Yes, yeah, yeah, and absolutely right. And how good it is to have friends who help you and encourage you. Amen. You know, I, I just love the fact that we did it together and then when I retired from working in the news department of CBN, after 20 years there and starting a couple of Christian news programs, Christian World News and in Spanish, Mundo Cristiano. Um, so I was able to take this concept that we had in the TV committee. And the concept was for networking news sources and distributing the stories as broadly as possible so that we could open a window on the world open a window on the world so that we could look beyond our own little house and see what's going on in the neighborhood and beyond by telling the stories and telling them visually, telling them visually. Um, the, world, uh, the world runs on stories. You've got amazing stories of your life. You tell stories of different kinds. The Bible is full of stories. Absolutely. Jesus never taught without telling stories. You know, so we've got to get the stories of what God is doing 
around the world. We've got to get those, make them visible. Capture them and make them visible. And that's what we're doing. We started in the, in the TV committee, started this forum for Christian News, and then uh, got the name Global News Alliance. And we kept promoting that for a number of years. When I retired from CBN, I was able to jump on it and say, you know, with, with my friends, let's make this happen. I think it would it would be I think it would be helpful for people to understand the clear goal of mm -hmm. the of GNA, and I also want to ask you to help explain the challenges that you have faced to bring this to pass because both of those things are important. The the, the driving motivation of the Global News Alliance is to show God's activity through his people around the world. So there are things that are going on. There are hospital ships, Christians working on hospital ships, medical missions, setting up crisis relief. We've got a story currently of a group taking relief to a city in Ukraine that's under attack. And they are, are providing relief for the citizens of that city who are caught between the two armies, the Russian army, the Ukrainian army, you know, terrible things going on. But the Christians are moving right in the middle and they're bringing relief, they're bringing medical support. And this is totally commendable. But beyond that, what we want to do is not only inform people, but we want to inspire them and we want to motivate them. So how, you know, well, when you see something like that going on, it should motivate you at the very least to pray for these dear people who are taking their lives in their hands to go and serve people, that uh, needy people, right? And the kind of needs that exist that they are meeting, these are, in many cases, they're under life-threatening circumstances. Yeah. And they're needs that are so deep that if the needs aren't met, no one knows what the outcome will be in the lives of the people they're serving. So it's critical. Critical, urgent. Urgent. So in many parts of the world, uh, Christians are stepping up, either through organizations, maybe through a local church, or just a, an individual that sees something to do and goes and does it. Now, by, by bringing that story, those stories, and we'll talk about how you capture those stories, how you get them, but by bringing those stories into view, by bringing them back to where we are, where our friends are, then, um, you know, my dad was, was a missionary and he was so happy that I was involved in media and working in news. And he had this saying, he said that the Holy Spirit needs, the Holy Spirit doesn't need anything, but this is the way he put it. The Holy Spirit needs information to lay a burden on somebody's heart. If you are totally uninformed, you're not concerned about the people in Ukraine, or you're not, you know, Christians in persecuted lands, or whatever, because you're uninformed. But once you are informed, once you know the stories, even the slightest bit of it, the Holy Spirit can take that, and He can lay a burden on your heart, to pray for these people, to tell other people, so they'll get involved, and maybe he'll have you do something. You know, we always say in the in our in our world, we say there are three things you can do: you can pray, you can give, and you can go. So there are lots of ways of going. So the the, the whole idea is to inform, yes, but in, uh, motivate people to get involved, and I would say also inspire people, because. I mean, you can comment on this, and I, I, th I'm, I know you know what I'm talking about. But when you in, uh, in, in today's world, with all the depressing news that there is, when I turn on the evening newscast in my home, my wife walks out of the room. Smart gal. She can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so discouraging, so depressing. And the, the news uh, networks know this. And so at the end of every newscast, they put in a happy story, a little kicker, you know, so that you don't go away totally depressed. But in that environment, 
we can get discouraged, we can get depressed, we can just shut down. But uh, these stories are to tell you who are watching <laughs> the news or are getting it from different sources, tell you there's another thing that's happening. And this is positive. It's not easy, but it's positive because God is doing amazing things in the world today. The church in America is often characterized uh, in the wrong ways. The, the wrong things get amplified. Mm. And people who don't believe in this gospel that we choose, we've been blessed to have uh, the miracle of faith to believe that it's real and it's changed our lives. People who reject this gospel often will look at the church and point to all the negative things that happens in what they perceive to be the church that may or may not be truly the church. When stories from abroad are shared that tell real life examples of people getting involved in desperate circumstances to make a difference. And, mm -hmm. and they're not doing it for the money. They're not doing it for the prestige. They're not doing it for a promotion. They're doing it because of a call to make a difference in the lives of people. And they do it in the name of Jesus. All of a sudden, it puts a light on the church triumphant as what it really is supposed to look like. A bunch of servants. Yes. We're supposed to be serving in this yes. fallen world. Yes. You put a light on those things. Absolutely. And hopefully that will change our attitudes and, and motivate us to get involved. Um, because if you're discouraged and depressed, you're not going to go out and do something. I mean, you just sort of retreat into, <laughs> into a darkened room, you know. But the other side of that is there are depressing circumstances around the globe. There Absolutely. are desperate situations. Yes. There's wrong. There's yes. oppression. There's depravity. And in, in many cases, it, it is believers who are being mistreated, and that mistreatment will continue unless there's a change. And change doesn't come because an oppressing power decides, well, today I think I'm going to do the right thing. Sometimes it takes knowledge to bring that change from yeah. the outside. Absolutely. And, and, and so we have uh, now a news service up and running online. Um, it's designed to, to uh, convey stories, to take stories to Christian broadcasters in different parts of the world so they will have the content that they need to inspire people in their own audiences. So that's the design of the Global News Alliance. But anybody can go and, and, and go to the site and see the stories. How can a viewer access that information? Simple, just online, uh, GNA for the Global News Alliance, gna.news, gna.news. It takes you right to our site. You click on any one of the stories, they're five to 10 new stories, fresh stories every week. Uh, they come from all kinds of sources. And if someone is touched by something they see and they feel that this is so important, they want to share it with their friends or their social yeah. media contacts, what do they do? Yeah, there's a, there, there are buttons for sharing with social media right there with the story. And so they're allowed to take this original content yes that has been developed by stringers, uh, news reporters in other parts of the world who have submitted their stories mm -hmm. with information to gna.news. Yes. They're viewers who see this and they want to take it to their pastor or to, their con to the congregation or right. to their friends and neighbors. They share it. Yes. And so stories from different parts of the world that would not otherwise, it would never see the light of day. Yes. You're making a pathway for that light to be shown broadly, brightly, yes. Yes. freely. Absolutely. And we do get a lot of stories. A lot of our stories come from ministries that are on the field doing these things. So uh, well-known ministries or ministries that aren't, no, aren't so well-known. 
So they will send us a little package, you know, a little two minute, three minute package. And we might modify it a little bit, but we'll put it up there with reporter stories and so forth. And, and, and I'm sorry, and we also have, uh, we, we have their websites, the source. You know, so if it comes from World Vision or whatever, we put up World Vision's contact so that people can go to the source of the story and they can find out a lot more. So, Stan, I, I love what you do. I have loved the, this plan from the very beginning. It's, it's, I've always been honored to know you and to be a part of the idea from a long time ago. And at the same time, I've always felt sad that I haven't been able to do anything meaningful to help. I believe in this and I want to help. Personally, I appreciate you coming to visit with us and share with our audience, but more so, I'm really thankful that from this day forward, we can connect in our own TV programs and our own social media outreaches. We can connect with the work that you're doing with these people in other parts of the world and we can bring their stories to our friends and, and those people that we want to be able to influence with this important information. Thank you for allowing this. And that makes me very happy. Yeah. It's I a big deal. I love it. I love it's, it. It's, a, it's a big deal. And it is. I'm embarrassed it's taken me so long to kind of activate, but we are activated and I, I, it's just such a, such a joy and pleasure to finally be able to do this. We've talked about these things for so long. Yeah. We're doing something now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's great. Look, there's another really exciting thing that um, is part of this whole picture. Okay, so I look out there, I'm never totally happy because there are a lot of stories that I see or I hear about and I have no way to get to those stories. I don't have a reporter to send. Uh, there's I don't know anybody locally who could produce it, produce a story. And we're talking, we're not talking about complicated stories. These are simple stories. Okay, there is, there is some work to it. You've got to know what you're doing. But there, maybe a two minute story, you know, it's, it's not such, in a sense, for me who's been in this business a long time, it's not such a big deal. But here's the thing. We envision an army of smartphone reporters around the world getting the stories that nobody else can get. Stories that can't, there aren't enough reporters to go out there. There's not enough money to send them out there. But there are people. Get that, but there are people everywhere. There's people on the ground yes. who are living out circumstances that they can tell a story. They can turn their phone on and share that information. Yes. And how do you train them? How do you help them do it so it's it's better. Yes. Well, again, if uh, we, we do have a little section on our website uh, under gna.news, it's a section called training. And there we introduce you to the concept of how to use your phone. You know, simple things mm -hmm. like when you, uh, f first of all, most recent phones produce excellent video. Absolutely. That's yeah. uh, handled right. It's totally fine for broadcast. Okay, so uh, everybody's got one in their pocket or in their purse, you know. I, I, think of, uh, I think of Moses at the burning bush, okay. Here's, here's my little comparison. Moses at the burning bush, God says to him, you know, take off your shoes, you're standing on holy ground. Uh, Moses is amazed, here's this bush that won't consume, you know, it's just burning, burning, burning. And he said, whoa, what, what is this? And God speaks to him, take off your shoes, and then he asks him to go and do a job for him. You know, get the, get the Israelites out of Egypt. Okay, so Moses says, whoa, this is too big for me. You know, I've been there, I've been in the palace, I know what, how things work. You know, you, you may have the wrong guy, you know. <laughs> but the Lord keeps talking to him and persuading him and overcoming his objections. And at one point he says to him, what's on your hand? And Moses says, it's a rod. The Lord tells him, throw it down. 
He throws it down, it turns into a snake, a miracle. And then he says, pick it up. And so he picks it up by the tail. I imagine he was pretty frightened, but he picked up his <laughs> it turned back into a rod. And he said, you know, God was instructing him to take that rod as one of his tools for delivering the people of Israel. Amen. Okay, today, what do we have in our hand? Yeah, it's a phone. It's a phone. Yeah. For goodness sakes, God has given us all, all. I mean, what percentage of the world has smartphones? Just about, you know, 90, I don't know. We, and some people have multiple smartphones. When, when you and I started in this television business, you know, my first experience until I've been a radio guy and then got into television. I started in radio too, by the way. <laughs> So my first experience, uh, one of the first jobs was to um, document an evangelistic campaign in Uruguay, South America. I took, I can't remember how many, but I took about five, at least five big cases of equipment. Yeah. Okay, I didn't have a big crew with me. I had one guy who volunteered to come and be an assistant. Five cases. I know what you mean. Big old camera hooked to, you know, tied to a cable to a recorder yeah. that somebody else had to carry, turn on and off. And the cassettes would only last 20 minutes. 20 minutes, that was it. You had to change cassettes, big cassettes like this. Yeah. I had one full case of cassettes, and I don't know if that was even enough. And today, you have a little chip like this. Yeah. It will give you hours. Yep. And you have a phone, and you don't get hernias like I did. <laughs> I've had three surgeries, you know, just from hauling equipment around and stuff like that. So we're living in a totally different way. We've got to take advantage of what God has given us, and God has placed those phones in our pockets. I, I agree. Okay, in our hands. Yeah, our, our first production trip to Israel, we had five, six, seven cases of stuff. It was just unbelievable what you had to haul. And now, if you have a phone, yeah. our friends need to understand it's for more than selfies with their dinner. Yeah. No, that's, so, a little bit of vision, okay? I, I want to serve God. I, things are happening around me. Maybe my church is sending out a missions trip group or, or they're, they're doing something for the homeless or whatever, you know. Uh, I'd like to tell that story. So, so. your, your GNA.news is also open to things that doesn't have to be in Cuba or in India or in Mongolia. It can be right here in America. Right here. So people right here, even if they don't feel like they're an evangelist, they can be a newscaster. All they got to do is look up from the plate of their steak and, and, and take a picture of something, take a video of something that might change a life. Yes. So in our society, it's embarrassing to have to say this, but many young people, their goal in life is to be an influencer. They think that's a job, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and they, they, they want to show their dinner and make it really count. <laughs> okay. I'm being a little sarcastic. Yeah but only a little. I, I would like to personally commit as a TV program producer and someone who distributes Christian television content. I would like to commit to, if a young person mm -hmm. wants to do more than show him or herself to be a narcissistic young goon, to actually do something that matters. If they will go to gna.news and just go through the training that you offer, they can then show video, they can report news from something meaningful. Yeah. We can take their story and we can put it on television or on our social media and they will then become an influencer. Influencer for, for good, for, for Christ. Good. And there's probably things in our society that are also bad and they don't know how. Some people are in a hole. Some people mm -hmm. are in a struggle and they don't know how to get out of that. 
you may, uh, our, someone in our audience may know someone who's really in a bad situation and wants to get out. Their story can help them or others get out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the whole idea is to recruit an army of smartphone reporters who have the vision for telling God-related stories and, um, and learn a certain set of skills to use what they already have in their pocket, which is a smartphone, to tell God's stories. You don't need, when we started, we need thousands of dollars, tons of equipment, <laughs> stuff, and now you've already got it. You've got it. So if, if they go to gna.news and look under the training tab, there's some tips. In fact, you can uh, download a tips card that we've set up to just get you started. And people but, can send their content to gna.news and then gna.news becomes like a clearinghouse mm -hmm. so people like us who produce a TV show or others who produce TV shows can come to gna.news yeah. to gather this information and become part of the tribe. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we it, clearinghouse is a good way to say it. Um, and we would like to coach people along the way. So I recognize, you know, I have a niece here in Waxahachie. I met her for, for breakfast the other day. And I love this girl because she has a missionary heart. She's already served in Cambodia on short term, you know, Antigua. And she told me, she says, I, I, I like what, this thing about using the smartphones. When I was in high school, she said, I would experiment and I would do little things just for fun. On my, I'd do little movies just for fun. But I'd much rather do it for a purpose, you know, for a, for a cause. And so I'm going to work with her as she goes through these tips. You know, then the idea is that she would send us something that she's produced and then we can go back and say, you know, um, here's some things that you could do to improve it, make it more watchable, make it more understandable, whatever. I was being somewhat sarcastic referring to young people today, okay? I'm very well aware that God's holy church is going to be led by young people. Mm -hmm. And they're not always going to be young. Eventually, they're going to get to be uh, young like we are. <laughs> and the truth is that God will raise people up in every generation to mm -hmm. use them to yeah. announce the love of God and the coming of Messiah and the stories of what He's doing in the world. One of the things that is so sad is that there are people in churches in our nation who they act like, I don't know if they believe it, but they act like God's dead, like God's not involved, God's not doing anything. When in reality, God is doing marvelous, miraculous, dramatic, important things globally and at home and in each of our lives if we're willing to be used. I want to encourage you to reach the young people mm -hmm. in our culture to challenge them to do those meaningful, important things and God will raise them up because God wants to see a nation called to, to righteousness, to truth to salvation in Christ. And he wants his children to be protected. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want us living in a hole, persecuted, oppressed, and, and broken. If there's a way to rise above that, yeah. we're in this together. Yes, absolutely. And that's the key. You know, I, I have two boys, two sons who are videographers. They're freelancers, they travel. Uh, one is getting ready to go back to Africa. And uh, th that's the general, you know, they're already getting a little bit older, but that's the, the kind of people who need to engage with this storytelling venture. You know, we want to tell the untold stories. And to tell the untold stories, or the stories that are out there that, that uh, the secular media doesn't see or isn't interested in. 
I, th there's actually kind of a blindness, you know. They, they, don't, they don't see this thing that we call God at work in the world. So um, we need people who are spiritually tuned, who, can, who have the eyes to see, who will go out and we need younger people, absolutely. We need younger people to take the lead and show how it's done and, and, and become pillars in this process of, of telling the stories. Um, you know, there's a saying, you are what you eat, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You eat healthy, you, you, you tend to be healthy. You eat unhealthy, you tend to be unhealthy. Uh, you are also what you consume in terms of uh, reading and, and watching, and so that affects who you are. So we want people to, to uh, uh, feed on, as it were, the good stories, the stories that have a point. They're not always happy stories, but they're stories that show things that are really significant and pushing towards a positive outcome. And that's where we are in the world as Christians. You know, we don't always see how it's going to turn out in the end, but we're involved in a process and getting engaged in that process is key. It's absolutely key. It's a motivator. It gives you life. People my age, without that kind of, without vision, you know, they sort of yeah. go and spend their, their, the rest of their life sitting in an easy chair or whatever. One of the beautiful things about uh, the Global News Alliance is that it's not to promote things to benefit an individual or a ministry. Yeah. It's news. It's it's right news. What what's what is God doing in the world? What is happening to God's people in the world? What are God's people involved in in the world? Okay, here's one that's a little bit difficult. It's a little bit difficult. Um, have you seen any stories about Palestinian Christians recently? You know, I'm I'm not. Sure. expecting an answer, but most of us, I think most of us, because we love uh, the people of God, yeah. you know, we love Israel, the people, um, that terrible war that's going on there, you know, it, it, it brings, it's tragic. It, it's tragic, it really is. And the detail that I'm getting to is that among them, there are some Arab Christians. Certainly and they see things from a totally different perspective. And they have a story to tell. Okay, I don't particularly, I'm, I'm not here to tell their story as they tell it, but I, I do feel a burden to point out story-wise, to get stories that show there are Christians among the Palestinians. They are grieving for their people. Absolutely. You know, they are trying to be salt and light where they are, and it's very, very difficult right now. And, and, and they're, seeing stories they're not, of, they're not uh, accepted. They're not accepted. They, no, they they're not accepted by, by, the, by them, and, they're, and they feel rejected by us because we, we kind of ignore them. Yeah, I, I, I understand. And, and so I, I've known some Palestinian Christians, yeah. Arab Christians. And yeah. Sometimes their views, I can't agree with all of yeah. their positions, but they are my brothers and sisters. And I know that among their own family members, they're, they're hated. Just as a Jew coming to Christ is not accepted, a Muslim coming to Christ is rejected on an, perhaps an even Absolutely. more difficult level. So. As a news organization, we have an obligation to tell the stories uh, that aren't being told. And that's one of the stories. I just pointed out because yeah. it's one of the difficult stories. Yes. To, to even get that story is, is difficult. And how about stories of persecuted believers, where if you give too much information, it can come back and, and affect them negatively. Yeah, you know, I, how do you tell that story? How do you get that story? So there are challenges, you know. But uh, going back to the smartphone, um, we have tips, and we actually have tip cards that can be downloaded. So you can, you can look at, you know, eight tips or ten tips on how to produce, produce, and then on the other side, tips on storytelling, how to tell a good story. Because 
you can you can do beautiful video, but if the story doesn't isn't well told, it doesn't impact you. I don't want to say it in a negative way. You know, it, it, the challenge is to tell the stories well. Absolutely, and and for those people who want to be an influencer, they need to understand how to do that well. Yeah, it's and it's a little bit different when you're not the center of attention and you're not the story. Somebody You're telling else's. somebody else's story. Yeah, people need to learn how to do that. Absolutely. Okay, here's another thing. It's, it's, it's totally in another area. But the inspiration part um, of, of telling good stories. When we get a story from um, an organization like Mission Aviation, mm -hmm. there are pilots sitting in churches all over the place who have no idea that there's a way to use their piloting skill to serve Christ in Papua New Guinea or, you know, yeah, in absolutely. different parts of the world. So by telling these stories, we open people's eyes to the possibility of service. I can serve as a nurse or a doctor. I can serve as a pilot. I can serve as an engineer. I can serve as an administrator. There's so many ways. All of our skills that we have learned, that God has allowed us to learn, uh, can be applied to the work of the gospel. So when people are on short-term mission outreaches, yeah. can their activities lead to new stories that GNA can work with? Terrific, yes. Absolutely. Every missions group that goes out there, every missions team should have one smartphone reporter <laughs> to tell the story, to tell the story. There's a lot of people who just don't see value in our faith, mm -hmm. okay? They don't believe that God is at work in the lives of individuals. There are so many wonderful stories that every believer could tell that would be an encouragement and it would show a lost, hopeless, struggling world that there is a path, yes. there is hope, there is purpose. And that's really what this is about. I couldn't have said it better. It's, it, it really is. My work in ministry uh, goes back to the early 70s and I had the blessing of being able to be mentored by a man who had escaped from a communist country, come to this country, came to faith, and he and I began working together to uh, to help the underground church mm -hmm. in communist countries. And I'm thankful that he allowed me to work with him and he, he trained me and helped me and caused me to have a, a concern for believers in other countries where it wasn't safe mm -hmm. to declare your faith. And he allowed me to go to some of these countries and minister in some of these countries. And we had to be very, very cautious as to what reports we would bring back and how we would characterize things because, not because it wasn't true, but because of the repercussions yeah. for the people on the ground that we left behind. I'm sure you see some of those kinds of things. And how do you help, how do you help us protect people and not cause them harm. Their stories need to be told. We need to, we need to understand what's going on. Um, you know, there are techniques that you can use. You know, changing the name, you know, giving the person a different name for that story just so that they won't be uh, identified by the wrong people. Uh, you can film people in silhouette, you know, in other words, not show their face clearly or sometimes from, from behind as they're talking if, to get their interviews. Um, you don't mention the exact location. You know, you've got to be, but, but you can get the person to tell his story and uh, you can bring in other experts or 
uh, yeah, to to uh, explain, you know, to amplify a story, to give it uh, somebody who's safe who can be on camera, <laughs> and uh, to amplify the story. So there are there are techniques that you can use. Uh, it's not easy. Sometimes the voice is disguised. It's run through a, a, a process, filter. Is a filter, an audio processor, so that it, so that even the voice is not identified. Uh, my wife and I. Uh, we're getting ready to travel back to Eastern Europe for a brief period uh, and I am hoping to connect with some people with whom I ministered you know a long time ago and people that uh, have stayed faithful mm -hmm. you know and I, I really w looking forward to trying to see what the Lord has done you know, since their world has changed so yeah. dramatically, I, yeah. I'm personally interested because I don't know. I, I, I want to find out. Yeah. You know, there, uh, we talk a lot about the persecuted and so forth, and that's, that's very important. Uh, there are also the more joyful stories that I, I'm thinking of a... Uh, of a story that came from the Maasai um, region of Africa, you know, the tribal yeah. people, yeah. and how um, a ministry here in the States started helping them to plant gardens and, and uh, you know, in, in such a way they really were productive and then helped them in other ways in the community, uh, provided Bibles and so forth. And uh, the pastor, who looks like, you know, he's got all of the look markings of the tribe, uh, he said, this is, uh, this is so good. It's, uh, it's helped our church. It's helped our community. There are other stories like uh, digging wells, mm -hmm. you know, and how those wells often placed on the property of a church, you know, so the people actually come to the church in a sense yeah. to, to get their water. And it's a gift from God. And it's a gift from God yeah. because now they don't have to go and get dirty water. They don't have to go to the hospital. We've got tons of stories of this. Uh, they don't have to go to the hospital every once in a while or take their kids to the hospital because they picked up some parasites and whatever. And the community has changed. Those are happy stories. Yeah. And they're happy in one sense, the community is improved, people's lives are better, but it's also a happy story because they're being exposed to the truth of the gospel, the living water as we like to call it, you know? And uh, so there, there's a mixture of, of the, the heavier stories, they're very important, but also the happier stories. And also the, the uh, Wow, I didn't know they could do that story. It's kind of stories, you know, the, the 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 use of technology, the use of airplanes and medicine, and all kinds of things that are that are out there. The Christians are yes. using yes. to bring to bring a blessing to people. You know, I I was walking around the campus of of the college down here that my dad used to teach at, and there's a big statue in front of one of the buildings of Jesus. It's a, it's, it's a commonly... It's Max's, I think. Exactly. <laughs> so here's Jesus on his knees washing a disciple's feet. And back on the campus of the college where I did graduate studies in, in Eastern, uh, in Virginia, there's also the same, same statue. <laughs> what we are doing is exactly what's taking place in that picture, yeah. in, that, in that statue. That represents the work of the gospel bringing life and healing and cleansing, you know, yeah. changing lives, serving people. It's another way of, of, of uh, sharing the gospel. This is the gospel in action. This is the reality of what it does. I, I got an email yesterday or the day before from Max Greiner, the artist who yeah. <laughs> does those uh, sculptures, and he's such a beautiful brother. He's such... That's an interesting human being. But again, he's sharing the gospel through his art. There are many ways for yes. the gospel to be shared and everyone can participate. And I love what GNA is doing because it's opening up an avenue for 
people, anybody that has a cell phone can become a minister of the gospel just by showing what's going on in a, yes. in a newsworthy manner. Exactly. It's a beautiful thing. Exactly. I'm excited because what in the last eight years that we've been functioning, this is really a shoestring operation. Yes. You know, we're <laughs> working with minimum stuff, but if you look at the website, you'd say you'd think it's a big organization. Yeah. That's okay. But I'm excited because we have done what in business is called a proof of concept, right? Yep. We've got it up and running. We've got broadcasters in Taiwan, in Korea, in Germany, in Canada, the U.S., Latin America, and some in Africa now who are using these stories already. So it's working. They're happy. Uh, one television channel in the U.K., um, has been using our stories and they've picked up on the persecution stories and they, that has inspired them to start their own weekly program on persecuted Christians. So they add their own content but they show our stories and our stories make it possible for them to do that program. Anyway, uh, all of this is happening but I feel like we're still a little seedling you know, the vision is much greater. Where's that army of, of, of smartphone reporters and, and the tons of stories that we, you know, Africans telling their own stories, Asians telling their own stories, not Americans telling the African stories. So that's fine. It's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. But it's not and they what do it, it well. Be. And yes. they do it well. But, and I say they, you know, here we are. So, but if Africans start telling their own stories, you know, there's another level of authenticity to it. And Latin Americans telling their own stories, and they're eager to do it. We are working to put the, the, the training, give them the training, get them started. And I think GNA, the Global News Alliance, once that process really gets going, uh, is, uh, is going to explode. Now, my biggest worry is just, not having the capacity to handle all this when it explodes, you know. Well, you used an important word. You said it's a seedling. Um, Stan, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but uh, you have a shelf life, okay? <laughs> I know this. <laughs> yeah, we are both, uh, we've, uh, we're still in the race. We've had a good run and we're still running. Isn't that amazing? Okay. But as a seedling, you have planted something that is going to outlive you. You won't perhaps see the full measure of what this will grow into. You may not get to rest under the shade of the tree that GNA.news will be, but you have faithfully planted and watered and protected this vision. Mm -hmm. And it is my hope and my prayer that others will recognize the importance of this work and that an army will be raised up. You need help. Yes. You need people that will understand what this purpose is and why yeah. it's important and why it will become on an ever-growing basis more important. The world is not going to get more light. It's going to get more dark. And this is a method to, to, to bring light, to yes. shine a light. Long time ago, we formed uh, uh, something called the Crosstalk International Ministry Alliance. It was done to share our platform. It was done to try and find a way to help tell some stories from the field of people that are out in the field doing the work of the gospel in other nations where there is no light on them, where they're working in a darkened environment and they have risks and they have discouragement and they may feel nobody cares and nobody even knows. Mm -hmm. GNA is the best method for people to know of what's going on so that those men and women, you've been in the mission field, your family is from the mission field, 
It's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to feel like you're doing all this for the Lord. Nobody knows. Nobody cares. There's not a lot of fruit. And you just keep plowing and plowing and plowing because it's the call of God on your life. God never promised it's going to be filled with an orchard. There's, there's an awful lot of stuff that goes on. We have an opportunity to shine a light into the darkness and put a light on people who are there to encourage them to be able to know what's going on so we can pray for them and hopefully provide some assistance. You need assistance. Yes. I, I want to ask our viewers to pray for my brother Stan, to pray for the Global News Alliance, GNA.News. And to ask God, are you supposed to do something? Are you supposed to maybe exit a little bit of your comfort zone and maybe use your cell phone for something more than a selfie? The very term selfie should tell us a story. Um, there is more to life than self. You need to find that, and I would encourage you to think about doing something to help my brother Stan Jeter and the Gospel News Alliance, something that matters, something that will outlive you, outlive me, and it'll outlive you as well, something that matters. I will ask you to pray about that. I don't want anything, and actually Stan doesn't want anything, but ask God what He wants, and then you do what the Lord shows you to do.